Hi everyone, this is Unrifenbreiter. The reason for me getting this game was because it won Spiel des Jahres in 1992, and it's a cycling themed game. Uh, it comes straight out of the box, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's quite a big box, it's very bright, it's yellow, and uh, it's all about racing around a track. Now the track that you go around uh, can vary. Now this instance uh, the rules are in Dutch, but uh, it doesn't matter because you can get them in English as well. And uh, what you can do is then you open this up, this is the 10, 10th year anniversary edition. So you can fill out the information on here, and uh, then you can obviously do your scoring. So in the game you're going to have dice, uh, that's going to be used for movement. You have cards, which again have abilities as well. And you have uh, some other cards which you're going to use for the colour that you're representing as you're going around. Pretty much basic colours, red, green, blue, etc. And you're going to have these um, arranged per player. So as an example, red would be taking up to where the red cards are. So you place uh, red as that. The other colours go out in a moment. You're going to lay out the board, which I'm going to make a bit of space for. So this goes over here. And then you lay it out as such. So here we have the board. It's extremely vivid. It's extremely bright. And uh, as you can see, we haven't even fully unlaid it. It's pretty massive. This is the 10th year anniversary edition as well. So uh, it's, as you can see, it's a humongous board. It's allowed to show you, but you've got an idea pretty much on what it looks like. So here it is in play. What you're doing is you're choosing where to start. So it doesn't really matter in this instance. You're going to be placing out your people. So your cyclists, so uh, if we're playing, say, this is, I'll play this as a two, I think it's much better with more players. You're placing out your people. Let's just say all of one color. That's all we need to do, I think, initially. And the rest will place them as well. So they're numbered. You have your leader at the front, 31. So let's say they go there. Uh, what you have to do is you go behind and you can't go directly behind. So we're gonna have 33 in this row somewhere over here. 32 is going to go somewhere again in a different row and 34 let's say there everyone else lines up as well so 22 could be here 24 could be over at the back uh, etc as you can see um such a new copy of the game these haven't even been played with either so those would go on and then what you're doing is saying right okay well who's going to start the person over to the left starts first and you're going to use your cards so you're going to play down some cards and you can roll dice. So you can roll dice and it basically says, right, you can be moving 10. If you have your cards out for, say, 31, I can be actually modifying that instead and saying, well, instead of me moving 10, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, just following uh, the actual positions where they're at. If you want to come across, you've got to, but there's some places you can't. So imagine I've rolled two ones. Instead, I could be using my 31 card. So my 31 card for blue, which in this instance I had that red for, didn't I? You have that blue, so 31, that's still green, that would make sense. So blues are in the 30s, so that is green as well. So 31 is here. So if I want to, I could use that basically to then modify the result. So that now becomes a six, as an example, and being very generic here. So I'm using that to be a six. And that means, okay, I didn't want a four, I want a six. I've spent it, but I've only used it one off. Unfortunately, that's the only time you can use it. You do have other cards, so I do have other 31s. So in this instance, you can only use these in mountains. Mountains are certain stretches of the track. Uh, but over here, we have um, a, a regular card. So you could play that, say, well, I want it to be a five, and you move them five. You can play both. So you could play a six, and then I want that to make it 11. Whereas this instance, maybe um, you, you keep hold of these cards because you're happy with, say, a 10. The reason why you want to hold on to the cards is you're trying to catch up later on. The game doesn't end until all of one player's, um, well, until everybody has crossed the line and you're going to get points. So the first person to come all the way around is going to score the most points, etc., and you decrease. Now, um, to cross the line, uh, you obviously don't want to give up because you can still try and make a you know, triumphant comeback. So coming first isn't necessarily terrible in terms of your first man. But what happens is if you go along and end up, say, here, and someone is here, 
then they can just jump along. There's another game called Flam Rouge, which is a very similar concept, which came out much more recently, about 2015. And if you pop along, yeah, it's beneficial to like tow somebody, ideally towing your own people. So uh, that's pretty much how the game flows. Uh, there are certain die rolls required to get right past certain places. And uh, being a pretty much German only game, uh, you're gonna have to translate the cards, but basically it tells you uh, certain positions whereby you can be doing certain things. So that's something else you can do. And uh, you can also play with joker cards. So other things that can come into play. So this is very much an overview. It's just a gist, tip of the iceberg. It's an opportunity to, you to see pretty much how the game plays. It's just a dice modification game, choosing a hand management game about when you want to play your cards. But that is Rife and Brighter. And um, this is a game that happened to spill the jars. In terms of its longevity, I think it's uh, obviously, well, firstly, it has some, has some strategies, but uh, the fact that it's just dice modification makes it quite a weak or light uh, strategic game. Um, fun and escapism as you go around, but compared to other things on the market, there's a lot out there now which uh, can easily represent, um, should we say, more of a game, and it really depends what your audience is going to be. For an oldish game, uh, you'd think that uh, you might worry that especially for the kind of people who might want to play this, it might not be well treated. Uh, this, as you can see, is in absolutely pristine condition. And um, in terms of, you know, would you prefer to play something else? I've mentioned Flamme Rouge. That's uh, definitely a hand management game. That's a um, card, it's not card drafting. It's a, to a degree, deck building. You end up modifying and being penalised if you end up going for certain, certain, uh, I don't know, pushing your luck elements of trying to actually win and get ahead fast quickly because you'll end up grinding up your hand with some quite terrible things. But it depends on what kind of style of game you are, what kind of things you like to play with and take it from there as to, you know, how you want to get. But this is a Rife and Brighter and uh, obviously I made a good inroads to making such games. Well, pardon the pun the word roads there. Games such as... Um, Flam Rouge coming along. So very much a gist on what on Rife and Price is all about. And uh, the fact that, you know, there is a shame thing about that language is, is another thing. Um, but that is the choice that a fact that other countries and publishers didn't want to pick up on it. But it's 1200 grams. And uh, I hope you enjoy seeing what the Spielders Yards of 992 was all about. Especially as whilst it's very well and easily accessible and purchasable, on the continent, you don't see it in other languages in other countries because, yep, you need to know someone who speaks um, fluent German who also wants to play the game. So that's a, that's a big factor. But thank you very much for watching, and that is I'm Right From Brighter.